When was the last time you watched a truly chilling thriller? Something that left you questioning not only what you just saw, but also your own interest in the entire genre. Because I have a deeply unsettling recommendation for you today. Red Rooms follows a fashion model who is obsessed with a high profile harrowing murder trial or is it that she's obsessed with the actual killer himself while also bearing a disturbing resemblance to one of his victims? Now, wait a second, I know what you're thinking. Before you dismiss this as just another serial killer story that revels in violence and brutality, hear me out. It's not one of those. Things are a lot more interesting and in a way, even darker. Instead of focusing on the murderer, who actually, thankfully, doesn't speak a word here, the movie turns to the women fascinated and possibly enamored with the killer. In his interviews, the writer-director Pascal Plant said he wanted to approach the story from the perspective of a spectator, not only because this just isn't done all that often, these movies are usually following the killer or the investigator, but also because he wanted to reflect on and question Question our fascination as a society with the true crime genre and with murderers in particular. We do live in a society, don't we? Everything in this film is seen through the subjective perspective of the observer, our main character, Kellyanne. We first see her sleeping outside the courthouse to make sure she can get in line early and secure a seat at this trial. She is that dedicated and we really don't know why. She's a hard person to read. She's clearly a loner, she comes off as cold, but she's also very focused and invested in the case. She's one of those characters who just feels off. The way she reacts to everything, it makes you feel uneasy because you just don't understand what's going on inside her head. Is she in shock? Does she know something? Is there a personal angle? The question you're asking yourself the entire film is, what are her motivations? And this is a very effectively uncomfortable point of view for us as the audience. We experience the film through her eyes and yet we are constantly wondering why she is the way she is. Then again, how many of us watch true crime movies and documentaries or listen to true crime podcasts with a rather morbid curiosity? Hey, I'm not shaming anyone. I watch true crime myself, so I guess that makes me part of the problem as well, but it is some food for thought. As things progress, you see that Kellyanne is very focused on her online privacy, and she clearly knows what she's doing when it comes to her online activities, way beyond your average person. The more you see, the more questions you have, and this is where Red Rooms combines a psychological horror mystery with a courtroom cyber thriller that occasionally reminds you of some something like Mr. Robot. In contrast to all of this sinister feeling mystery, we also meet Clementine, who is openly infatuated with the man on trial, willing to speak passionately about his innocence to anyone who will listen and ready to question any kind of evidence against him, even if that means crafting theories about him being framed and the evidence being fake. As the two of them become friends, we learn more about who they are through their interactions. And it becomes obvious that even though at first glance, both of them can be perceived as these kind of basic twisted groupies, they are two very different people. Clementine, very emotional, what you see is what you get, and you do get the sense that she might have actually convinced herself that this man is innocent. Kellyanne, on the other hand, very calculating, definitely has some sort of agenda, definitely knows more than she lets on. It is interesting that at first, Clementine seems to be the more unhinged one just because she's so outspoken when it comes to defending the killer, but there is a darkness about Kellyanne that's very unsettling, and while Clementine will let you know exactly what she's thinking, when it comes to Kellyanne, you just don't know. Who is she? What's her deal? Even their reactions to the gruesome details of the case are very different, and this entire film, you want to know why. Now, since I keep mentioning the case and the evidence, I want to make it very clear that despite the subject matter being very dark and disturbing, 
more on that in a minute, there is no gratuitous violence in this film, and yet it's still so tense, shocking, and very unnerving. The trial revolves around the horrific murders of three young girls, which were filmed and shared on the dark web. This is where red rooms come into play. These crimes are absolutely shocking, and you never see the videos. Well, except for one shot, but you don't see any bodies in it or anything like that. My point is, as a viewer, you never see these crimes being committed, but you hear them and you see some reactions to the videos and believe me, that is more than enough. You also hear the crimes described in detail in court in this absolutely haunting opening statement, a big part of which is a brilliant long take where the camera just keeps slowly moving between the prosecutor and the accused, eventually leading into the defense, which is an incredibly effective sequence. The tension in that scene is insane. But in the background of all that is the unreadable face of Kellyanne with this barely noticeable single tear at one point. Ugh, it's just so messed up the closer you look and the more details you see. Red Rooms is the type of horror film that doesn't scare you by showing you the gore because it knows that your imagination will do the work. It's very smart filmmaking that will have you constantly on edge and beyond uncomfortable because of what it's implying. The way the story is told and how it uses color and sound just gets your mind going in the worst ways. For me, this was extremely disturbing and because the images you come up with in your mind based on what you hear and see are the result of you taking in and processing information, this movie really lingers and becomes impossible to get out of your head. I will say you really do have to pay attention to the details to understand what's going on with the main character because while some things are more obvious than others, the movie doesn't really hold your hand through all of it. But there are plenty of breadcrumbs. Here's an example, which is not a spoiler, but if you don't want me to point you in the direction of paying attention to a specific visual detail, skip to the next part of the video. Kellyanne's online nickname is Lady of Shalot, which is also the desktop background on her computer. Now, Lady of Shalot is a poem by Tennyson inspired by Arthurian legends. The poem is about a noblewoman stranded in a tower up the river from Camelot. She is not allowed to leave the tower because of a curse, and is only able to see the world through a mirror. Kellyanne, of course, spends a lot of her time looking at the world through a computer screen, and the condo she lives in is in a tall building with these window walls that kind of make it look like a glass box. That is an interesting visual in itself because you can definitely draw a parallel between this glass box condo she lives in and the glass box we see in the courtroom. But back to the Lady of Shalott. One day, she sees Lancelot, and that is what makes her decide to leave her tower, Lancelot, the Knight of the Round Table. And what is the killer's last name? Chevalier, which literally means knight in French. Coincidence? I think not. Is Red Room's the creepiest take on this legend? Yes. Yes, it is. So here's what we have here, a horror thriller offering a different, refreshing approach to a serial killer story that steers away from the gratuitous violence, but remains shocking and deeply unsettling. It's a thought-provoking look at our obsession with true crime. It's also a story of a woman unraveling as Kellyanne becomes increasingly more paranoid. And to reflect the changes in her state of mind, the cinematography brings in a touch of surrealism. To compare it to another recent amazing procedural thriller, Red Rooms, like Anatomy of a Fall, explores what's under the surface, but instead of the complexities of a marriage, the trial brings forward the darkest corners of humanity. As the puzzle pieces fall into place, and yes, this is absolutely a movie for those of you who enjoy watching a puzzle come together on screen, this movie takes a popular subgenre and turns it 
it into something original and special. It's tense, it's effective, and so much of it works because of what's being implied. You don't see the videos and you really don't want to, but the impact is there and your brain perceives the movie as watching something very twisted. The idea of it is, of course, but your imagination is there to make it even worse. And beyond the awful crimes, the people willing to watch them happen are what is truly haunting.